Hi everyone. It's been a while that we are meeting now through these stories. I hope you all are enjoying the stories, loving the science, making the toys and having fun. So today's story is also a very ancient story. I myself was not even knowing about her. But her story life, her life is very interesting. And so we thought we all should at least know about her. Her name is Hypatia. Many of you must have heard this name, but now I will tell her interesting life story. No one can know who the first female mathematician was. But Hypatia was certainly one of the earliest. Hypatia was born around 355 AC in Alexandria, which was considered to be an intellectual center. Hypatia was a fortunate child raised by her father, Theon of Alexandria, who was a teacher of mathematics at a museum of Alexandria and a keeper of the library in Egypt. He was her tutor and also a teacher. He trained Hypatia in the fields of arts, literature, science and philosophy. Can you imagine a single person to be a master of arts, literature, science and also philosophy? Yes, she was taught everything. So it is not necessary that you only love science or I, I love English, I don't like science. It is not necessary. You can love science, you can like English, you can love history and you can do everything at a time. She was also taught to work on her speech which gave her the gift of being a good speaker. Hypatia's father also wanted to make sure she was physically fit. He almost made sure she was an all-rounder in her life. He gave her physical education consisting of rowing, swimming and riding on a horse too. By adulthood, she had surpassed her father in both mathematics and philosophy. Becoming the city's foremost scholar and taking over his position at the head of the Platonic school, which is similar to a modern university nowadays. She refined some scientific instruments and wrote books in mathematics. But perhaps her most significant contributions to intellectual life in Alexandria came through her teachings. She was a very, very good teacher. None of Hypatia's own writings have survived, unfortunately, but her students have documented her work and life which paint pictures of the quality that made her renowned as a scholar and a beloved teacher. Philosophy that Hypatia taught due from the legacy of Plato and Aristotle. The conversions of these influences merged to form a school called Neoplatonism. From the Neoplatonists, mathematics had a spiritual aspect divided among four branches of arithmetics, geometry, astronomy and music. These subjects were not studied merely for the sake of curiosity or practical use. They did not study only because they had curiosity. They did have curiosity about everything, but they did not study it only because of curiosity and practical utility, but because they had authenticated that the mathematical language was the only language of universe. What does this mean? This means if you want to communicate with universe, that is nothing but if you want to study about the universe or if you want to study about astronomy, you should know mathematics very deeply and very nicely. You should love that. You should get interested into the mathematics that is growing into that, is what she thought. 
students travel from the farthest region of the empire to study with her. Hypatia developed an environment where all students could feel comfortable to study. But in that same city of Alexandria in 415 AC, the bishop and the governor were in a fight. Hypatia was the advisor to the Alexandria's governor and so she found herself caught in the middle of the struggle between these two powers. This led to the eventual murder of Hypatia on the 8th of March 415 AD in the streets of Alexandria. However, Hypatia lives on her legacy in a lunar crater which was named after her. And so she lives on forever sitting on the moon and looking at the stars in the deep thought as she ever did. What can we learn from this story today? Even if the environment around us is not nutritious enough to learn anything new or to achieve anything great, we are the ones who can change it and make it healthy and friendly to learn and to adapt new things. And hence, we can live happily, study happily and enjoy whatever we are doing. I hope you all have loved the story today and today's story is again a mathematics one. So in today's story, we are going to play cards. Isn't it fun? Okay, so you need a deck of cards where you remove all the faces. That you only take 1 to 10 cards. That is aces and till 10. So aces will count as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. Remove the jack, queen and king. Okay. Now, shuffle the cards. I get half of the deck and you get half of the deck. If you want to play an addition game, you draw one and I draw one card. Again, you draw the second and I draw the second card. Now, my addition is 5 and yours is 20. So, you win. You get all the four cards. Now we have to see who can draw the cards of all the second player and start playing. Now if you want to play a multiplication game. You draw two cards. I draw two cards. Now your multiplication is 18 and mine is 48. So I win. But now if you want to make this a little bit more competitive. You can draw two cards. I can draw two cards. And the person who shouts out loud the addition of their own cards first wins. So, 11. You win. You get all the cards. I hope you have understood the game and you can play it with addition, division, subtraction and multiplication also. You're going to enjoy playing this game. You play it with your parents or your elder or younger sisters and brothers. I hope you love the game and tell me if you do in the comments below. Let's meet up next time for a new story. Bye.